I first met my co-host when she had a syndicated talk show all about sex. Sex with Sue. Sue McGarvey. And I am the Milkman John Milky, host of The Milkman Show. Heard on radio stations across North America. And my home base, BlastTheRadio.com. We're glad you're here. Let's get turned on. There she is. I can tell she was listening to the Milkman show just before we did the podcast because she's singing the last song I played. Love is all around. By the oh, and it's an earworm, right? Uh, every time I have to do it, I have to turn on that Muppets da, 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 to change it. And then I've got that earworm in my head. But love is all around us. Oh, God. I speak up my own words. I And, and that, that one's beautiful because it starts with I feel it on my finger <laughs> and in my toes. Right. It Your made me curl thing. my toes. Uh-huh. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Dri- drive to and from the East Coast with me for, you know, be in the car for 12 hours and see what kind of song lyrics we come up with. I think we should record those, right? The, the uh, Milky does song lyrics. It could be like my dad, my dad writes a porno. If you've not seen that YouTube video, God, it's hilarious. My dad, my dad writes a porno, but it's, uh, you could do that as, you know, Milky, Milky changes the words of, you know, a regular well, song. X-rated. It could be hilarious. When I think of it, I eject the memory card in my dash cam because it captures the sound of me <laughs> singing. And by and large, you'll hear my wife beside me just like pissing herself laughing because it's ridiculous right. all right from songs let's talk rhythm it's the, the best rhythm of rhythm. the night yeah um <laughs> best rhythm for sex is where we're going i know it. best rhythm for sex and we yeah yeah so boom yeah you said the boom chicka boom but it's not that it's all right are you doing now let me give you the, the list are you doing in and out boom 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 or are you doing the back and forth grinding while maintaining the same penetration so her eyes roll back in your head Let's go with door number two. Are you doing deep or shallow? And shallow for some women who it's really deep, it feels like you are in the back of their tonsils and they don't like it. Mm. Other women are like, have sensitivity. We talked about this in the in the, the far end on their cervix and really do like it and don't want you to mess with that penetration level. So is it deep versus shallow? Is it slow versus fast? And slow is better. Slow is always better. Unless you're close to orgasm, and then she may go. Now, you know, slow is up. better for Sue McGarvey, or slow is better overall. I think slow is better to overall speak. to start, unless she tells you to giddy up, unless she gets the you know the, oh, the start the absolutely spurs yeah. into your side, and it's usually closer to orgasm. Most of them feel better um, slowly, and yes, Sue, Sue likes it. Sue likes it hard, not necessarily. You know, anyway. spurs are fine, but stilettos will do in a pinch. I'm just <laughs> putting will, that out uh, there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, I don't. I gave away all my stilettos. I, I'm at middle-aged women should not wear high heels anyway, uh, especially ones after yes, after they've torn your Achilles in a in a yeah. Anyway, no worries. Just we should not do ultimate. Um, clenched versus relaxed. So clenched is when you squeeze. You know, like you're gonna do a plank and you squeeze your your stomach mm-hmm. muscles and you're clenching. It does not lend well to um, you know, lasting longer. The more you clench, the faster you go. People now, who's like who's clenching? She or him? Well, she can clench all she wants because when you penetrate her and she's clenching and you can feel that that throb, that's exciting. And maybe you don't want her to because it's going to put you over the edge. But if you clench as a guy, you are going to come too fast. So this is mainly to help men last longer. I do a whole series of discussions about how to last longer and what kind of exercises you can do. But being really aware and mindful of when you clench your stomach when you're having sex will help you last longer. See, that's not been my experience, especially when it comes to tease and denial. And orgasm denial is is a big thing in the kink world, etc. Um, the the pulling it back and denying yourself the orgasm for me that's not what i'm talking about i'm talking about relaxed just being able to breathe and having the muscles relaxed or i'm like don't come don't come don't come and you're all clenched that actually will cause you to ejaculate more because in terms of in terms of it it tends to it Hmm. the ejaculation response is like hitting your kneecap it's it's it can either go (laughs) It can go, it's, it's, it's like breathing, right? You can breathe slowly and mindfully or you're talking and you don't think about breathing. Ejaculation is like that. It can go right to your spinal column and out and that means it's, you're done before you know it. Okay. Or, and it happens more likely when you contract, when you clench, because then it goes right to your spinal column and you're finished. I'm or, clearly going to have to pay more attention to how my body is when I'm... Yes. Or mm-hmm. you can breathe and be relaxed and understand that you're mindful and your frontal lobe is controlling when you ejaculate. 
And that, that gets us to the whole tantric sex thing, right? That's and that's kind of what that's all about is that deep, relaxing, extending the whole yes. session. Yeah. Okay. All that stuff. All right. Gentle versus sink it to the nuts. You know, are you one of those people that wants it gentle or do you want, or do you want to just be pound town? You want to necessarily pound as if you're pushing through her. Like it doesn't have to be so deep that you're finding an, like a back crevice. It means you're just, you know, doing it in it. You know, you're trying to sort of go right through her body and get to the other side. There are lots of women that really like that. We were, you know, I know we mentioned it in a conversation about all the lesbians I know. And that's when I, I actually saw them at a club and all they wanted was to borrow a penis because they wanted yeah. the hard, hard pounding intercourse. That's what Les Lesbians wanting yeah. a penis. See that. They, by, they by the very definition of a lesbian, that doesn't make any sense to me. All right. Sexually, they want the real thing because it feels so much better than a strap on. It does. Really? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The strap ons are not the real thing. It doesn't have the same texture or temperature or sensation. It's not the same. They're good, but they're not the same. So the lesbians I know don't want to talk to you. They don't want to have a relationship. They don't even need you to go down. They just want to borrow your dick. And then they want to be pounded because what they're all, when everyone I've talked to, what they miss is hard pounding intercourse because that's what they don't get from their partners. Okay, So I'm curious then for a gay man, we're going to flip the table here for a gay man um, in your experience, do these same conversations happen where they're just craving a, a woman for an hour or two or? There are some men that are bisexual and on the spectrum who would sure. identify as sure. gay and occasionally sleep with women. Um, Often it is, it's, you know, and, and, and again, I haven't polled enough to say this is a true thing. And a lot of the gay guys I know are like women, yuck. Unlike the lesbians who right. have usually had male experiences, a lot of the gay guys are like, no, I really don't like Every women. Every gay either. man I know is very afraid of the vagina. Yep. They can be really afraid of it. So yeah. they tend to be, um, you know, they, they often, if they're bisexual, they, you know, they like the person, not necessarily the body parts. And so they would just, you know, I think everybody's on a spectrum. Like I have an aunt who's, you know, who's 20% gay or no, 80% gay, but 20, she's married to a woman, but 20% straight. And she occasionally misses men. Okay. I know another guy who says, no, Sue, I identify as gay, but there's that 20% of women I'm really attracted to who I really like who I'd love to slide in between their breasts or, you know, you know, just cause I like them as people and I kind of want to nibble on them and eat them up. <laughs> and I think that happens. Okay. But I don't, I don't hear the same conversations, but when I hear from lesbians, what they want to do is borrow a hard pounding dick. That's what they want. I just, <laughs> I know. I'm, Rhythm I'm of the sex. What do you I'm want? Do you want? It takes me, it takes me back to a quick little story for you. I'll give you the, the abbreviated version. Um, doing overnights on a radio station, got a phone call from a guy in a bar somewhere in the Valley. Um, and he'd been buying drinks for, for two girls all night because the girls were telling them, that they were lesbians. So this guy and his buddy buying drink after drink after drink. And I finally set the record straight. And I said, wait a minute, you said they're lesbians. He said, yeah. And I said, well, like, are they bisexual or are they lesbians? And he froze because he'd never pondered that. He asked them, they said, no, we're lesbians like full on. And the disappointment in this man was one of my, one of my favorite phone calls ever. Uh -huh, Cause yeah. he's realizing he's not going to get in the middle of that. Sandwich. That lesbian meant I don't care for men. Yep. And it doesn't matter how many drinks. I'm going to appreciate you buying us drinks. Thank you very much. Yep. And if you're doing it because we're going to put on a show, that's one thing. Or you're doing it because you want to be friendly and you happen to have a lot of money. If you're doing it because you think you want to be in the middle of that. Mm -mm. Anyway, I the ones I know just want to see the day. They want pictures of it. They want that's what they want. They just want to borrow a penis every now and then. And I, but I, I when I'm talking about the best rhythm for sex. It's how many people have had those conversations. It's one of those things where you don't ask, right? In well, and out, back and forth, deep and shallow, slow, fast, clench, relaxed, ongoing, or breaks. Do you take breaks? Do you tease? Do you want to keep going? What do you do? Do you do gentle? Do you sink it to the nuts? Like, what's your thing? And this is, as, as it, it, in my situation, when that is articulated to me, when I get a little feedback and a little instruction, faster, slower, this, that. Ha, ha. And she's going to have a way better experience because don't you? Yeah. Like, no, just keep going. Be, just like be that. My, don't stop. Be my sex GPS. Guide me to where you want me to take you. Ah, you're such a good boy.
you've got a question from someone, uh, Sue, and your address is? Sue at sexwithsue.com. All right. So they went to a rub and tug, which is awesome. Um, and apparently things got a little carried away and now they are nervous. Yep. Yep. They're panicked. They thought it was just going to be a light massage. Well, I guess the girl was really into it and decided she was going to rub all over him. And there was, you know, there was all kinds of fluid everywhere on both of their parts. And he is, he's a bit of a germaphobe by his own admission okay. and is quite worried about testing now married doesn't want to go like it's just he says i'm up nights worrying about it sue uh this happened last week what do i do i i can't you know my wife knows where we we have one car i'm not booting downtown to go to an sti clinic if i go to the doctor she's going to want to come with me what do i do and i said do you have a private address and he said yes i have my brother's address i could certainly do something there why i said because you can do at home sti testing and it's, you know, one of the guys I knew, had, you know, uses an Irish company, but there are, uh, you know, I found eight that range between $49 US to $260 US, depending on how many tests you want, but you could be tested for everything, hmm. everything. And they will mail you a little kit and you can swab yourself and mail it out and pay your money and you will get your full results back. And it's absolutely guaranteed and unbelievably confidential. They have like this code that they put on your credit card and he said yeah I, I pay the bills she's not going to know what a code is you know i just bought something on the internet perfect so Can I ask, let me ask you a question um when you're tested for an sti and it comes back that you are positive for disease um are you not required does that clinic not require you then to uh inform partners uh if you're in Ottawa, Ontario, Canada, they the and and it comes back, the clinic will call you and ask for your partners and ask you to talk to them and ask to speak to them if there's something significant. That's what I'd heard. Okay. Um, but if you're doing it anonymously, none of those things happen. You're okay. doing it by mail. The mail doesn't care. All they care right. about is your hundred bucks. Right. And and so. I thought it was a good out. Like I, you know, I'm all for getting tested and, and I, every time I have, I'm, you know, I'm, I get hormone testing every four months and I always ask for blood work for SDIs. Not that I expect any, but it's, I, it's about do what I do, what I do, not just what I say. Right. Yeah, it's, whenever I'm going for a blood test and my doctor gives me one annually, when I go for my checkup, I always ask, can, can you put STI on there? And absolutely. And, he I, me, and, he, and his answer is always, aren't you married? And I'm like, and, <laughs> and so was Bill Clinton or Hillary Clinton in this case. Yes. Like, yes. Well, I have the ring on the right hand. I'm just saying. Well, it just, it doesn't matter, you know, where you are. It's, it's just, again, it's about self-awareness. And for me, it's as much about me showing people, look, here's my paper. Oh, yeah. Here's what it looks like. Here's what happens at the doctor. Um, so that's that discussion that I do in terms of moving forward. So it's just, it's just being responsible. Yeah. It, yeah. it, I think it is. And I think it's, again, it's about the more you understand about where you're at and if something came up. So if, if I'm done every four months and something happened within those four months, I can pretty closely pinpoint or I'm looking right. at my partner going, dude, do you have something you want to share with me? Um, and I don't think that, you know, as I said, I'm not worried about it for me, but it's part of my standard testing. And I think that it's great. So it leads me into the next question that I got. So it was great when I get questions. So in this case, I don't get people emailing me, Sue at sexwithsue.com. I get people stopping me. I was, I, I went to a kiss concert this weekend. Well, it wasn't a kiss concert. It was a kiss tribute band concert, but I was dressed, I was dressed up in my makeup wow. and I went to a St. Patrick's day and it was at the St. Patrick's day event. Somebody said, Sue, I have this thing going on. And what the question was, um, they were, and, you know, and I was, I was out, you know, talking about that. And, we have a mutual friend who said, Sue, I'm going to drive down to the U.S., cross the border, an hour and a half to Augensburg. Never been to Augensburg, but I need to buy some lambskin condoms because I can't find them anywhere in town. And I went, that's bullshit. There has to be some. Lamb and I really got on. condoms. Okay. okay. So for people who don't know what they are, if you are allergic to latex, you can use. A lot of people are. And a lot of people are. You can yep. use the polyurethane ones like the female condom, which I really like. But if you're looking for all natural, although it sure as hell isn't vegan, 
Um, a lambskin condom is not from the skin of the lamb and apparently does not provide protection for STIs. So it's it's basically a lamb intestine. It's Makes a sense. little it, yeah, it's a little bit of a lamb intestine. It's you know, they say come the pouch where the sheep's large intestine begins. The same kind of thing they would ironically wrap a sausage in at right. the butcher shop. Got it. Right. So they wrap it in that and they put it in and it it's it's a bit porous, which means that the viruses, mm -hmm. which are really small, can get through, but sperm, relatively speaking, are big and can't. So it prevents pregnancy. It does not prevent STIs, which is why they're not really popular. So I just called a couple of the compounding pharmacies in town. They're all like, sure, Sue, we got some in the back. Sure, we'll sell you some. <laughs> but there were lots around town. You just had to know where to look, right? And Amazon.com will sell them, not Amazon.ca. It just takes a week longer to deliver. Now, why, yeah. why is it then that if they are obviously approved in Canada, because you can go to a pharmacy and if you ask the right question to the right person, you'll get them. Why is Amazon.ca not selling them when Amazon.com can? That's weird. It is. Well, there's lots of things Amazon.ca won't sell. And I think it has to do with the, the, you know, the part of it. But I thought, I thought it was really interesting for people who are really struggling to either find them or get them or what is the pros and cons. And they're kind of unusual. So let me explain to them. You know, you open them up and again, it's a sheep intestine that's dried up, but is moist enough that it can go on. And it has a little drawstring at the bottom. Seriously, it's like tying your mittens to the base of your penis. Well, there's your safe sex and your cock and ball torture all in one. I know, right? And then wonderful. They've also got, a, you know, and I remember getting them the first time and going, it's got a slight odor. I'm a little yeah. off by that. I'm like, it comes in the, uh, it's, and you open the wrapper and it's like, and it's lamb not, is gamey too, right? Lamb, lamb is gamey. It's, it's yeah, kind of, yeah. I, don't, I don't need it either. So it's not, but it's enough to be noticeable and you know it's it's you know condoms can be defined by natural membranes and you know and pretty much that's the one and again obviously not vegan but it is and vegetarian even but it works for some people who are really need organic stuff and don't like the polyurethane like my hair 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 i have it here god you know i have female condoms on every flat surface of my of yes our first podcast we did face to face and of course sue just at the ready here's a female condom john because <laughs> you know welcome to my house and it's right it's, yeah it was the it was i had a small i have a friend who has uh, six-year-old triplets oh my god and so when you need wow. to borrow i need to you know she needs i'm like look i'll take the triplets for an hour it's like chaos and of course they're into everything and like every sex toy out you know I'm like what is this I'm, oh my gosh yeah anyway so i have to de triplet the house before they come over but mm. I, have, I certainly have condoms everywhere but i think for so people are trying to figure it out it's something to think about lambskin condoms and thank you for pulling me aside at a st patrick's day party and asking me about you know all natural you know made in ireland yeah I, and, I, thank you. An irish, irish lamb yeah and I, I thank them too i think that's an important conversation and something that people need to be aware of like you said with the latex allergies etc and if people don't realize that they're available here i wonder to answer my own question the amazon.ca versus .com i wonder if by virtue of it being an animal-based thing that it can't cross the border i don't know Perhaps. I don't know. I'm just guessing. Maybe I've been watching too much border security on whatever that channel is. <laughs> whatever that channel is. Well, we'll, we'll figure it out. Somebody's got to have sources of them. And if you look hard enough, SDI Clinic didn't. I called them. They didn't have it. So just so you know, and they're like quite adamant. It doesn't protect you. And I'm like, I know, but we don't have, and they don't have any either. It's better than nothing. And they're like, yes, it's better than nothing. But all right, next up, <laughs> don't take this the wrong way. Sex games that do not suck. I know, right? There is actually a game called Love Sucks. And it's a, it, you know, so I was, you know, I was thinking board games, right? And you can take a Scrabble game and only do dirty words or you can, you know, different things you can do. But there's a whole series of, you know, PlayStation 4 and all of that, you know, and, and I don't game that way. Um, so when I sit down to do something, it better be easy because otherwise I lose interest if I'm like mm -hmm. dying every two seconds <laughs> and it better be fun and there better be zombies or something that I can shoot. I don't know. <laughs> um, but they have this whole series of new sex gaming things. They've got one. There's a whole thing called Steam, which is adult gaming. Um, they've got sex advice succubus. 
a succubus is a, you know, basically it was a, myth a mythical creature yep. who, who you can't, you know, who you female myth mythical creature that can't get enough sex. Think of it yep. as, you know, a nympho on steroids and they have, they have things that there's one called poke stars, poke stars, like, Poke stars. I don't know. So they have all of these things. And, you know, my, I saw a few of them and they started like in the 80s. And I remember seeing the few of them with just like this little guy with a, a cue ball head, like an eight ball with like just jumping up and down and doing that, you know, bouncing and all kinds of really crappy things. And there were, there was, you know, for guys who, you know, who coded them, they were for people who liked boobs but hated women. That was that. But how do you get, you know, sort of different kinds of sex games? So those ones are the new ones. And right. apparently they're worth looking at if you've got one of these PlayStations or something. If not, there is some new sex board games. One is called Sexopoly, right? Like Monopoly, mm -hmm. only you can play up to eight people, right? Instead of boardwalks and avenues, real estate in this game is Meryl Strip's film studio, Krabby Panties Lingerie Store, the Pole Position Strip Club is the real estate. Okay. And mixed, mixed in are question cards that text your sexual knowledge, risky or frisky, that throw in dares. And if you can't pay your competitors, you lose clothes instead of cash. I that thought, was fun. Doesn't it sound like fun? Okay. I'm like, I may have to order it. So I'll keep you posted. We should, Yeah, yeah, that would be fun. By the way, if I get a get out of jail free card, no. I'd like no. to stay here, please. <laughs> yes, I want. The, I want the bad jail. Oh, I want the bad guard, jail guard. Come on. Yeah, 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 yeah. They have one called Massage Seduction Games, which I think you can make your own. Forget buying it because I'm all about doing it on a discount. Mm -hmm. Amplifies the pleasure of rub down by turning it in a game. So it's a it's a card game with massage techniques and scenarios. Massage candle that melts into a lotion, and a heart shaped massage tool that heats up. But you know what you do with those? You get a pocket warmer. You know, the cheap one pocket warmers, they work just as well. With like some the oil. ones you put in your gloves and your you put in your gloves. They're on sale right now at Canadian Tire. You can get it for like 99 cents, but they heat up really well and they can be used across the body, which are really fun. Ooh. So if you want to spend 99 cents at Canadian Tire or your local hardware store, have a look at those right now. Love Honey Kinky Confession Card Game. I threw this in for you because I think you'd really like it, right? Instead of a twist on would you rather, this card game encourages you to open up about things you're into and you can forfeit and pay by choosing from a list of horny punishments. <laughs> <laughs> yes, please. I vote for that all the time. Yes, yes. Yeah. You know, that's, that's fun. One of the very first sub that I ever had um, gave me a gift once. She had modified Twister. You know how Twister's got the little uh -huh. spin wheel? Oh, and yeah. so before you could put, you know, your right hand on red or whatever, you had to, whatever the arrow landed on, you know, 10, 10 spankings or, oh, okay. you know, uh, wear nipple clamps or whatever. But it was a DIY thing. And yeah, it turned out to be a lot of fun playing that. I, I, I think Twister's awesome. I, I do them at duck events in the park in the summer and we cause like such a scene. Everybody's dressed. Oh, but uh -huh. We have we. I what I did is I I I bought them all. Every time I saw them at the you know the, at the Salvation Army or something, I would grab a bunch. And I now have I just used the 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 play form, so they were like you know four by four. But you get enough of them, you take over half a park, and uh, we're all playing. So hey, you want you want to do a BTR BTRV thing this summer? Yes. I'll bring all my Twister games, and we can all play Twister by the RV. Yes, well, typically I'm the one showing up at Sue's events in the park, bailing her out with a PA system. I think I we just took it to a whole deal. new level. Okay, fun. I, I like it. I think it'll be really fun. So those are the fun games that you can try. I have a bunch of, do you know, you can do it yourself, whether it's Twister, whether it's Scrabble, whether it's, you know, it's just, it's deck of cards and do that. I like to play Naughty Crib. Um, and if I skunk you, boy, you know, I'm going to be the pillow princess. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but it's it's a fun thing to do. Whatever whatever works for you. Have a look at some of these new games. We got to find something to do with Cards Against Humanity. There's got to be a, a twist there. All right, fun games. Appreciate that. And finally, Sue, there are two types of desire. Yes, there are two well, types well, of desire. Only two. Well, there's there's sort of a whole bunch of research talking about, especially for women, and a lot of women are feeling like, Sue, I'm not in the mood. I'm not turned on. 
Except that I, I try and help women understand that there are two kinds of desire, spontaneous desire where you're like, I want it or, you know, or anticipating pleasure and responsive desire as if in response to pleasure. So, and it, it was really came clear to me. Um, I had a client in the last week and a half who, and they're a couple, and he used to be the guy who was horny all the time all the time, all the time, all the time, and just chased her around and was constantly at her. And she's like, oh my God. And she's rolling her eyes and he's just wants me all the time. Well, his testosterone has dropped significantly in response to some medication. Okay. And he's not like that anymore. And she's like, I can't believe I'm saying this, but oh my God, do I miss that part of him mm. where I was so, it just, you know, it used to drive me nuts. Now I am so sad because I miss it because I can't get in the mood because I respond to him. And I think it's a really interesting idea. You know, if the per per woman's not thinking about sex at all, but she puts on some sexy music, smells her partner's smell, overtly erotic, plays the game, passionate kisses, and suddenly she has desire, responsive, right? Again, she may only believe sp spontaneous desire is real, but it can often limit a positive sexual experience, right? The two, the two types of desire are perfectly normal and happens for a lot, right? Research has suggested that women may have stronger inhibitory systems than men, meaning more numerous and sensitive, put the brakes on. And it's important because women and their partners can believe they can boost their sexual desire and arousal by adding more accelerants, which are games, sex toys, erotic material, turn on porn, have fun, have a conversation, or do some things where she's not thinking about work or the dishes or laundry, et cetera. And you may, you know, and, and guys understand this, but they don't, I don't think they really get it because it's a constant siren in most of their heads. Okay. <laughs> That's all you got to say about that? Okay. I'm just listening to the siren in my head right now, trying to figure <laughs> out what it's saying. <laughs> yeah, it's sex. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and music, and then sex, and then music, yeah, and yeah. then sex, and then food, and then music, and then the dog, and then move the cat, and then sex. Yeah, I know you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you do. I do. You yeah. Do. yeah. It's all good. So it just understand that desire, however you feel it, is normal for you. And yeah, and understanding, I think, your partner's desires too. And like, this is this was such a thing for a long time. You know, my partner didn't understand that when I walk by and I, you know, I grab the ass, that's me saying desire. And if I don't yeah. get the response, it's like, okay, no desire. Right. So, you know, the articulation of that's what this signal is, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And um, now she hears sirens, uh, uh, you know, now that I've told her, but that's yeah. what that means. Fantastic. And she goes, wiggle, 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 wiggle. Do we have five minutes? Yes. Let's do this. Before the commercial break is over, we're done. We're right back watching what we were watching. So <laughs> it's fantastic. Ah, <laughs> uh, that's good. So I hope everybody had does something to increase their desire this week. It makes the world a better place. I was just reading the new report about the, you know, the fact that the planet's going to hell in a handbasket because we are all this greenhouse admissions. And we are, you know, the UN report on the on the climate is so bleak that you want to pull the covers over your head, but at least we can get laid. Hey, what a great way to leave this planet, right? Right. Mm -hmm. love or love free yep. love is important yep yep, yep. Yep. that's how i want to go out with a bang uh-huh uh-huh always a great conversation with sue mcgarvey um uh, hey if you got a question for sue you got comments on the podcast we're on google we're on spotify we're on apple podcasts we're on iheart we're on amazon music uh ask your smart speaker to play turned on the podcast we'd love to hear from you what's the email address sue sue at sexwithsue.com forward to another conversation a week from now